Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so, uh, here we find ourselves at Euro Quality Lambs Limited. Would you be kind enough to introduce yourself? Hi, Assalamu alaikum. I'm Rizwan. I'm Managing Director of the family run business Euro Quality Lambs. We're the largest Muslim owned land business in Europe. We're based here in beautiful Shropshire Hills. Fantastic. Um, and I can't help but notice just over your shoulder there is a, a green dome. I, I, I hope we're going to have a look at this a little bit later on, but every, whenever we go out, obviously we're looking for places to pray, you have it on site? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we um, created um, the Craven Arms Islamic Centre around uh, 10 years ago for both our own employees but for the wider community to come and use. And we do a lot of outreach work from there as well, where we have visit on mosque days, work with the stars. Um, we work with the local interfaith uh, group as well. So yeah, alhamdulillah, it's a good facility for everyone. Brilliant. So do you find that Islam affects a large part of what, what you do and how you do it? We try to run our business holistically. So as well as providing, inshallah, the best halal products and services we can do, we are a riba-free organization. We pay our zakah and we contribute towards the local masjid so that people can fill the salah. Fast in Ramadan, we have children's classes over there. So, yeah, a holistic approach to everything, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Brilliant, brilliant. Can we have a little look around? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my background is I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I qualify as Price Waterhouse Coopers. And it's important to try to be the best you can be in any profession that you're in. When I came back into family business, because of the whole discussions and debates around stunning, non stunning, halal, haram, I felt that I needed to learn more. So I did a master's in meat science from Bristol University. Alhamdulillah, I got a distinction in that. My paper was published, it's available online. I also started to research Islamically, what does the Quran say about halal? What do the hadith say about halal? So I've got a one word document where every time I come across ayah to do with halal, I record in there. I've got another hadith document, another word document, all the hadiths I come across are recorded in there. That then becomes my Islamic reference points. Now, whatever we're doing is sort of then based upon this this foundation of what the scripture actually says, and we build upon that to then um, that with the with, with this or the science to try and bring the best quality halal, quality meat products that we can to consumers. So we find ourselves in the in the boardroom, and just before we go any further, how cool is this? You find yourself in a boardroom, and what is above <laughs> us are just uh, amazing. Love it, love it. Uh, sorry, you were just telling us a little bit about the um, the the support that you'd given to the to the Pakistan Recovery Fund. Yeah, the Pakistan Recovery Fund was an initiative of Prince Charles um, through the Prince's uh, 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 Charitable Trust. And um, in 2010, when the floods hit the Pakistan, our foundation, the Euroquality Foundation, helped support the Prince's initiatives. So that's just a poster commemorating that where my father and people from the meat industry went to the dinner organised by Prince Charles. Wow. And um, yeah, in this room we, we, we like to travel. So over here we have the um, uh, calligraphy from a Chinese person <laughs> who did some Chinese calligraphy of the Kulub um, Allah Wow. Um, in Chinese as well as uh, in, in Arabic. So that's when I went on a meat industry trip to Beijing. Uh -huh. um, we have over here some of the awards and trophies. More recently, we were at the uh, we won the Islam Channel Business Awards Fantastic. Um, for Family Run Business of the Year, and we won British Muslim Awards before as well. Uh, we had some scholars coming here before. We were talking about as we we're discussing about halal. Uh -huh. There's different types, you know. But we're, we're talking about we're trying to have a clear line of what's halal and haram. Mm -hmm. But there's different levels. So mubah is what's permitted. Mm. Mustahab or the Sunnah is what's the idea. We have different levels in between, and even the haram, you have, you have makru, you have the grey areas of, of mustaiba, haram. We talk about potentially tiering of halal standards. You could uh -huh. have like a gold halal, which is more your sunnah, or your bronze halal, which is your basic halal, etc. Gives consumers that choice of whether they want to go for the full sunnah halal or just the, 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 the basic halal. Fantastic. Talking about effects on, on, on the animals and, and uh, through slaughter methods, etc. Brilliant. And then across here, you were saying that this is your... Yeah, so this, this is the products that we sell. So mm -hmm. we process around 15,000 carcasses a week on average. During Qurbani time, they go up to 25,000 a week. We sell mainly to France, but also Germany, here in the UK. And we've now got an online shop on our website where consumers can buy a full 
lamb cut up into British cuts, which a lot of Asians aren't used to. Yeah. So, you know, you can get that delivered to you. It's not online. What, have you, right. what are you saying? What have you been saying? <laughs> what have you been saying? We have to have butchers yep. that can cut halal meat. Yes. I want to do a rack of lamb. Yes. Now, if I go to my local butcher and ask for a rack of lamb, <laughs> I just get loads of lamb meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. You get that from my shop. Well, how do you that? Cool. Wow. wow. Do you want to just give us the... How would we find that online? So, eurocoatylamb.co.uk slash shop. So, we've got different products. We've got a half lamb um, or a full lamb. And we're going to have the different recipes on our YouTube channel as well. So, you can get an idea if you're not familiar with... As, as, as Brother knows about how to cook rack and lamb. If you're not familiar with that, you've got inspirational ideas on different recipes. <laughs> I'll handle that. How happy are you? Oh, <laughs> how happy are you? the on the YouTube channel. Right? Yes, For yes. For some okay. reasons, it was great. <laughs> 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 you know when when when, when uh, it's kind of things are said and yeah. it's like you know mentally I know he's ticking them off tick oh that's amazing tick oh that's amazing tick oh that's amazing I've seen one thing I've seen one thing that is now 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 I'm going to get your goat if you'll excuse the pun <laughs> and that am I oh no yes oh, yes it is <laughs> <laughs> it was all going so well. Until <laughs> I, it, oh. You can get on my dad, though. He's a United supporter. So. Hey, there you go, you see. It's all come good. It's all come good. Brilliant. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Brilliant. Yeah, there's a lot of things passed from one generation to the next. Sentence is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Jazakallah. This is only the old yet if you want to do new life. This is Lisa at Trucks at Home here in the UK. Yeah. Um, it's a shame we haven't got our export trucks because we just got some new ones with some really nice pictures of Shropshire Hills on there. Wow. Um, but we haven't got any here on And you, you were saying how many go onto the continent each day? Uh, we have at least one truck, if not two trucks. There's about 900 carcasses on each truck. Wow, and that's every day? Yeah, every day. Wow. You're saying what a backdrop. It's just beautiful. Our drive in today was our hand. It was. It's stunning. It's amazing. Beautiful. We think that we're we're. Have we said this? We think that we're, as Yorkshiremen, we think we're spoiled, don't we? Oh, there's nothing like it outside of Yorkshire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God's own country. <laughs> and then we come here, and it is just beautiful. So we're basically in our Learage office at the moment. So mm -hmm. when we buy lambs from the livestock markets, we book them in onto our system, and they come in over here. So for example, over here we had from Monmouth the 15 spring lamb number ones, from Exeter 209 spring lambs, from Sedgemoor 282 spring lambs. Okay, so how much does a lamb cost? <laughs> it varies, you know, at the moment the prices are quite high because we're coming up into, into Easter. Yeah. The best time to buy lamb is around September time when the prices okay. are at the lowest. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment it will be quite high. Right, okay. Yeah, so can you put a price on that? Can you... We can find out the price when we get back over there. Okay. The prices okay. change that frequently. Okay. On a day-to-day basis, yeah. that offer oh, really? that, yeah, that offer I was showing you, day-to-day -day, price can change ten percent. Wow! So the buyer and the seller are in the same office. The, the seller is telling the buyer what's happening in the market. The buyer is telling the seller what's happening in the livestock market. So they're trying to make sure that they get the land at the right price. Wow! What's happening in the market? But the variety in the prices is is, is phenomenal. That's it's extraordinary. Phenomenal. So there will be some somebody somewhere in the world short selling. Lambs, <laughs> I'm making money on just that. Oh my goodness! But you can you follow the provenance? Absolutely. Yeah. So we can supply Welsh PGI, Southwest. We can supply anything that people want. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, it's amazing. When the sheep come in, we put them into pens, depending on where they're from, so we can maintain traceability. And then on our schedule, depending on which customers want which type of lamb, we will then put them into our our schedule. And then you see here that the lambs are getting fed in and they're going through for the slaughtering process you can see when we go around the other side. It's a massive scale. It's a massive scale. You're saying that sheep are, or certainly lambs are relatively easy to 
look after and control? Yeah, they're, 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 it's, it's beautiful. Prophet Sallallahu said that there's not a prophet who wasn't a shepherd. And you know, that, that connection with animals and guiding animals and looking after your flock, um, there, there is something in, 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 in sheep for sure. From this point, from the road, off the wagon, to the point where they can't, it all depends on the customer orders. But, but typically, like within 24 hours, they will okay. yeah. Once they come on the habitat, you have to do them within three days. Yeah. But because the sheep are in a different environment, they're not out in the grass, etc. Yeah. They um, can get stressed yeah. in a different environment. Yeah. So you want to try and keep that time as minimal yeah. as, as possible. Yeah. You have different operators on each part of the line. Uh -huh. Everyone's doing their parts. And what one person does is affected affects the next person on the line. And we'll work with the team to ensure that by the end of it, you get a high quality, what we call a dressed carcass. Uh -huh. So the skin is taken off cleanly, the inside is taken off cleanly, so you get a nice, pristine carcass. This may sound silly, and I, I don't, I'll probably not even, I'm stunned at how clean everything is. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, we know that cleanliness is part of Iman. Yeah. So even from a faith perspective, we should try to do everything as, as clean as possible. Yeah, extraordinary. Not at all what I'd envisaged. Uh, yeah, I think they're all the same size. He's looking for large. <laughs> <laughs> they all extra large. <laughs> And, uh, you don't and discriminate. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I noticed behind you, uh, was that, is that an HMC logo? Yeah, yes, we, it is. We use it HMC is. brothers here as well for oh, those customers that want HMC. Wow. Um, we do the traditional slaughter last time for those customers that just want the product. Yeah. We have, we have HFA with some kinds. We have ABS who are um, in France, um, equivalent to HMC over there. Brilliant. So we, Brilliant. we provide whatever customers want. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that's amazing. Well, these are just the disposable ones, so they only used once. Um, so they come in and, and they, like I was saying there, that when we use, if we, we don't wear them going to the leverage, <laughs> okay. because if we wear them going to the leverage, it's just the area. <laughs> <laughs> if we were to wear them, normally, if they don't have are, are you in Formula One? So, yeah, overshoes are like uh, yeah. just in case smooth. you're wondering, yeah. the right? answer is yes. Uh, these are you do look as ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Yeah, it's so important. <laughs> there we go. Already. Exterminators. Right, <laughs> <laughs> you going? Yes. He needs to learn how to sharpen his knife. Yep. He needs to learn about where on the neck he's cutting. Yep. Um, there'll be different species of animal have that more wool on their necks, mm -hmm. etc. That he needs to get used to or yeah. take a, a horned head yep. to position it, it properly. Um, that comes with experience. But mm -hmm. the idea is you do a single stroke yep. and you're saying the name of uh, God. Um, and this is one other thing that people, some some uh, for non Muslim, they think there's some sort of voodoo or something going on at yeah. the time of. Slaughter, you know, is saying in the name of God. Yeah. So you can say that in English, you can say that in French, you can say yeah. as long as you're referencing the one creator, yeah. it's said in Arabic yeah. because that's what, what uh, is traditionally, yeah. that's what makes it uh, permissible for Muslims to yeah. see from that. Yeah. This, this is the hair that just covers the top of the head. Right. But we'll just uh, wash our hands now. Of course. Everybody. Difference is just the same as the Now, this is me, I not have to be out loud. As long as he's moving a bit and staying on each animal, that's the requirement. Yeah. So, the guys in White are who, sorry? So, they're the food standards agency. We have an official vet in the food standards agency here all the time, checking the live animals in there. Uh, we have the complete inspectors here on the line checking every single carcass and every single offer wow. and stopping them to make sure there's no pathology and contamination of the carcasses. Incredible, incredible. Over here, we have a gradient system. 
on here, you basically got the fat class from one to five. So one bean is very lean, two and three L is like a little bit of fat for flavor. So fat is good, but you don't want it to be too fatty. And this is a confirmation, this is where the muscle distribution is. More muscle around the legs and the loins, what we're, what we're aiming for. So this, this green area is what our target is. This one is okay as well. These ones are either too plain, or, or, they, or they haven't got enough of a shape to them, or they're too fat. So over here, he is, he is, he's been weighed. You see the weight of every cast over there. And he is objectively, from experience, seeing that what is the shape of the animal. And then there's a carcass label being printed. It's a grade O2 from market range. It has the lot number, the carcass number, the weight, the grade, the barcodes. So from that we know the details of where it's come from. So here you, we put all similar grades together on just ours. So I am just from the HMT guy. Yeah, there are four stamps for this person. Yeah, for the HMT stamps. Yeah, come on. So this is for our stamps. So with HMT stamps, they will also put four stamps the HMT stamps. This is one of our smaller fridges. Yeah. Um, so you just have you put different grades of, so depending on the weight, mm -hmm. the fat level and the conformation, we, we class those carcasses together so that when the customers are then looking for a certain type of product, whether it's a smaller carcass or a bigger carcass, we then know what grade that we want to give them in different okay. ages. So, from, from coming off the bell, off the, off the bell, yeah. into the bench, yeah. down the, the uh, tip to the cut, yeah. then come upside down to bleed, and then skin off, in and out, yeah, heart and lungs out. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, uh, clean. Yeah. Trimmed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then through to this section storage. Inspected. Graded. Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Inspected, yeah. graded. Yeah. Then to this section where it's stored. Yeah. And this will then go out to butchers or, or, or wholesalers. Wholesalers or butchers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from, from coming off the, the wagon yeah. to ending up. On my plate with my chapatis at home. <laughs> yeah. What's the time scale? If, if you were to order online, then it could be two days. Wow. Wow. That's fresh. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. So incredible. How long? Wow. Another thing, uh, Yusuf. You know about uh, uh, Muslims don't know about dry aging either. Okay. So sometimes with meat, if you hang them, the carcasses, yeah. for a while, for now, if you hang them for seven days, yeah. the meat actually softens, yeah. it develops more flavor. Yeah. So the beef is about 28 days, for that, about seven I days. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 28 days. They, they, they dry age it. Yeah. So that's another thing that we're offering to people, that if you want to try dry aged lambs, we can, we can do, we can hang the carcasses in here for seven days, yeah. it'll develop that little bit more flavor, and then present to them as a dry aged lamb. Okay. So yeah. we're trying to educate people on different, Types of quality of lamb. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. Alright, let's just check if there's any of these uh, of our uh, cut product in here, but there's a the delta. These are okay. our wholesale products in here. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you, you can make this gentleman run by just pointing a camera. <laughs> 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 so, I'm doing that here that we have the ability to five times prayers. Yep. Um, we have that, are we? Yeah. We have like uh, two hamsters from every. Wow! Day. Look at that. All of the workers who are Muslim. Yeah. We'll be able to take regular breaks to come and perform their prayers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they'll they'll take all their, their protective clothing off. Yeah. They'll come in. They'll perform wuzu. They'll pray, and then go back and back to work. What, yeah. What happens is that because they have facilities there in the in the factory okay. as well. Yeah. So that just so they don't have to go go come all the way over here, etc. Okay. So, but they have facilities for for right. prayer. And when the line is finished. People live around here, they've got their mosque over here, yep. they've got children's maktab classes, they've got sisters' classes for the for the wives as well. And um, we have quite a lot going on over here. Amazing. And on site. Yeah. Because I believe, is that where we had our meeting? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, extraordinary. That's right. That is There's incredible. The factory. There's yeah. the, the shed itself. How long ago did you actually create this as a, as a masjid? 
So we've been here since 92. Yep. We bought this building in 2000 and wow. we designated that as a, as a masjid. And we were praying in the in, in our front living rooms. Of course. Prior to that. Um, and this extension that we have here was about three years ago now, okay. three, four years ago now. Um, so Alhamdulillah, we didn't have, we had the town council supporting us in our application. That's... We've had lots of support from local people. Yeah. Um, we, ha we have this belief of Islam not being foreign to a area. So what we try to do is that we have the dome on yeah. the front. It looks like the, the, the rest of the, the streets. So we yeah. kept it in, in keeping in with keeping, the nature yeah. of the street. But with some geometric design, so it looks a little bit different, but it's still in keeping with the nature of the shape. Mm. Even our logo for the mosque, we try to cap and capture Shropshire Hills within that logo. Um, so we want it to seem as something that's part and parcel of the locality. Alhamdulillah. So this is the on-site masjid yeah, for, this, uh, for this company, Alhamdulillah. And the, the amount of outreach that they do into this community and surrounding communities, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless them for all the good works that they do, inshallah. So we really hope you enjoyed that. For the 21 video series, everything you ever wanted to know about Islam and the Muslim culture, but couldn't be bothered to ask, click the link in the top right of the screen. Also, please subscribe by clicking the red button below if you haven't already done so. We want to reach as many people as we possibly can. Thank you once again for your support and we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah.